I wanted to step away from the vis like a visual culture because I feel like people are probably so tired of looking at screens and I wanted to pull like a, a sonic element into the work so that we're really listening and we get to challenge the way we listen and that's been important for me and my work even before the pandemic started and I'm thankful that I had kind of that foresight in my work to pull um, pull audio and sound um, and focus on that. I felt that the awakening that I had was how resilient people are and how they re, uh, remake the idea of home in their, new, in their new places of home or how they've redefined the structure of, um, you know, Western housing or, or, you know, Canadian um, housing into their own um, values and using their houses as cultural spaces um, in the way that they want to. The way that they recalled um, their homes was so present. It was, it was like as if the picture was being painted here and now. And I feel like with, uh, you know, folks that are, that are second gen um, or third gen, um, or you know we're born here. Um, it's a very different uh, story they tell when they when they talk about houses that they've not necessarily lived in, uh, but they visited. When they're talking about their you know their parents or grandparents' house versus when it's actually newcomers themselves who've lived in those houses and, and come here. Historical trauma still exists because those structures still exist in our society. Uh, the same Victorian house uh, of Scarborough Museum, actually the colonial administration in South Asia, um, the British colonial administration in South Asia had built similar structures there when they were in power. Those structures still exist in South Asia and they're actually historic sites now, um, or people live in them. You know, more wealthier people live in those houses um, that were built by the British in South Asia. You're constantly reminded when you see these structures that this is, uh, colonialism happened and it's still happening. Because, the, you know, in particular, the British and the French had um, built their, their specific type of housing in so many places around the world, the standard, you know, Victorian house is, is a triggering thing to look at. I also think of like plantations. I think of the, the houses on plantations and how that's a symbol of like violence and colonialism for um, black folks and how, um, how do we fully disconnect from that um, when we're physically being reminded um, of these places and like how, how, they, um, how they impacted us. My question is when you're showing those homes then it, you get it, like, okay, these are the types of homes. Why aren't, why aren't we preserving these types of homes? Why aren't these structures? I wonder if there, if there is a way you could say what those structures are, but still do it in a way that it feels old schooly filmy. You know what I'm saying? Because you got the film, you got, you got a look happening. And even the way you superimpose them feel very interesting, very real. So I'm wondering if that is something you could do, almost like, stamped on or you know what i'm saying you know as someone who predominantly works um in the music industry making music videos of course director x is you know someone that i look up to um and it was a great privilege to be able to speak with director x um and also um you know i was given a book recommendation and um that was so great because you know it like the the knowledge then like I can keep with me um, in a physical form um, and you know it's not confined to like how many minutes of the min uh, meeting I had I could um, keep developing and learning through literature he had told me about um, and what inspired him um, and his like Bible to be privileged enough to um, hear what director x's bible was <laughs> i was like i got the ticket the the voiceover gives it all context and explains why we're in this little place and why we're going to this place around the corner because people like him um paved the way for people like us in toronto 
people that can pave the the way for directors you know um when we go to la now and we say we're from toronto we we have a reputation um and that's because of people like um like x so i'm like i'm very thankful um and i hope the rest of us are as um fearless um are as confident so that we can go out and also just like not you know and, and give back and give to each other um not only give like below us but give like to folks on the same level the housing uh is a privilege in the society um and it's not a right as much as we want to think of canada and toronto as an equitable society it's still a privilege to have uh housing here um, it's a privilege to have housing anywhere. Um, and, and the way that houses are designed, the way that our communities are designed, um, even looking at parks, um, why are they only places of, uh, if they're public, why are they only places of, of play if, if someone needs to live there because they can't find housing somewhere else? Why can't they? Um, it's, it's just about the privilege of space for me, um, this project. Um, it's a great privilege for folks that are already artists um, to be to be alive through this pandemic because I feel like we we have our our form of healing um, and actually we we can be leaders for folks that that need um, support right now. And we should recreate public spaces in Canada the same way.